like to call like the little quick little clip notes on this. So, um, so far what we talked about is some asymptotes, all right? And what I want to do is I'm going to go over, I kind of lied to you. I said that was going to be the last function. Well, it's not really the last function it is, but it's kind of not. We have one other kind of function that comes in a different form. f of x equals a of x divided by b of x, all right? It's very similar to the reciprocal function, all right? Except rather than just saving 1 over x, we could have different polynomials up there. It doesn't have to be a 1 in the numerator and just an x in the denominator. We can actually have separate polynomials, all right? Now, since again we have a function that is rational, we are going to create asymptotes, all right? Now, remember asymptotes, ladies and gentlemen. All asymptotes are, okay, is, all asymptotes are a, a line to be approached. Okay? That's all I want you guys to think of them. Sometimes you could say, oh, you, your, your graph never crosses the asymptote. Yeah, that, a lot of hap that happens a lot, but there's actually asymptotes that we will cross at one point or another. So I don't want you to always be looking at that. Usually with vertical, though, your vertical asymptote, we know we can't divide by 0. So yeah, it's never going to cross your vertical asymptote. But all I want you guys to think about when you're thinking about asymptote, it is a line that is to be approached by your function. All right? It is where your function approaches but doesn't actually meet for our values. All right? So as your function goes to infinity and negative infinity, it approaches the asymptote. And we talked about how it approached, remember 1 over x? Remember how we talked about how it approaches 0 and it approaches undefined? We kind of talked about that? Maybe not. OK. Um, so there's three different types of asymptotes I want to give to you guys. And I'm going to give you guys a short little rule that I want you to follow. So the first one, what we call the vertical asymptote. Now we've talked about the vertical asymptote um, before with the reciprocal function. So real quick, the vertical asymptote, all it is, ladies and gentlemen, it's when your denominator equals 0. So all you need to do to find the vertical asymptote is take whatever is in your denominator. Right now, we're calling it b of x, which is a function. Whatever is in your denominator, set it equal to 0. Okay? You find the values that make it equal to 0. Whatever those values are, those are your vertical asymptotes. All right? <coughs> so take your function, set it equal to 0, solve for x. You guys know how to solve for x, right? Whatever those values are, that's your vertical asymptote. Horizontal asymptote. We have some rules. Okay, horizontal asymptote. We're going to look at the degree. Does anybody remember the degree of a function? Andara, do you remember what degree of a function is? It's okay if you don't. Do you remember what degree of a function is? What is it? Yeah, it's your exponent, but it's not just all of the exponents. What exponent is it? Yes. So to find the degree, may, remember, ladies and gentlemen, a polynomial is created up of terms, right? The term that has that largest power, that, that power is what we call our degree. So the largest, so what we say, power or exponent of a polynomial is what we call the degree, all right? So when we're going to find the horizontal, we're going to look at the degree of a of x and b of x. These are going to be two polynomials. So when we have a of x, is greater than b of x. And again, I'm talking about degrees. Okay? When the degree of your numerator is larger than the degree in your denominator, you have no horizontal asymptote. When the degree of a of x is less than the degree of b of x, you have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. Okay. Then last one, when a of x is equal to b of x. Okay. So right now what we've talked about is either the degree in the numerator is larger than the degree in the denominator, no horizontal asymptote. The degree in the numerator is smaller than the degree in the denominator, y equals 0 is the horizontal asymptote. Right, which we notice in the reciprocal function. Um, now, what about if the degrees are exactly the same? 
Then we need to look at the leading coefficient. Do you guys remember if you have a degree, remember the leading coefficient was the coefficient of that term? Yes? Do you guys remember? So what we're going to do is when a of x is equal to b of x, the degree of a of x is equal to b of x, then our horizontal asymptote is y equals a over b, where a and b are coefficients. Are your leading coefficients, I should say. Are the leading coefficients. All right, and we'll get into some examples. I'll give you guys some problems like this. Um, so we'll get into examples of all of these, Wendy. But you're going to want to make sure you guys have those written down because you're going to have an example, at least of every single one of them. The last one, vertical, horizontal, and I'll use the easy name, slant. All right. So we kind of already talked about one degree is larger than the other, the other degree is larger than the other, or when they're equal. We don't really have a third option, do we? However, we do know when there's no horizontal asymptote, there's a possibility to have a slant. So a slant asymptote is going to happen when your degree in your numerator is larger than your degree in your denominator. All right, But the difference of your degrees in a of x minus b of x is equal to 1. Remember, I'm talking about degrees. All right. So if I have a of x is larger than b of x, and the difference of the degrees of a of x minus b of x is equal to 1, then we have a slant asymptote. All right. Degrees. We're talking about the degrees. So therefore, if I have y equals x squared minus 1 divided by x, does that have a slant asymptote? Yes, because the difference in the degrees is 2 and 1. But if I change this to a 5, the difference in the degrees is not 1, right? So therefore, this has no horizontal and no slant. All right? Then, so, all right, so Mr. McLogan, we got x equals 2 and x equals 1. So what's the slant? The slant asymptote is y equals the quotient of a of x divided by b of x with no remainder. So what? So what I'm saying is if you have a slant asymptote, ladies and gentlemen, what you're going to do is actually divide your denominator into your numerator by using long division. That answer, that quotient, is your slant asymptote without your remainder. We'll get into more of this in a little bit later. Ooh, is that my food? No, but like seriously, if you have like some extras.